Hi, and it's a great big welcome to episode 324 of Aussie Tech Eds. This is the 17th of January 2013, and we've got a few stories to tell you about tonight. Have we ever? Now, joining us tonight is Will. It's only Will tonight. Hey, Will, how are you going? <laughs> it almost wasn't. It's uh, been interesting. Now, um, <laughs> now, Will is on his phone. His computer's... Uh, crapped out or something and uh so he's on his phone so apologies for the 3g what uh cellular tones that might be emanating from ipswich there <laughs> so we'll, we'll try and get to it as best <laughs> as we can all right aussie tech heads That's about all we can do. yes have you tried aussie tech heads hosting well if you haven't what are you waiting for my goodness it's uh it, it's affordable it's fast aussie service so great plans there's uh you know plans from 5.95 a month up to well, whatever you if you if there's not a plan there you come and come and talk to us and we'll make you a plan hosting if you've got a, a web page a blog or anything bring it across we'll help you bring it across uh and we you know we'll provide you with all the top-notch support we've got everything going on you know if you've got a problem we'll help you out you know none of this uh two thousand dollars the fee for this and two thousand dollar fee for that you know we'll help you out the best we can anyway unless it's a really hard question that is so, so come and see, have a look at us at aussietechets.com.au forward slash hosting. And, uh, yeah, get your, get your beans around some of that. Now, welcome to the lounge. The lounge, the lounge looks after us and looks in on us every Thursday night live as we record. So they're there right now, right right this minute, right now at uh, aussietechheads.com.au forward slash live. And also the video of the recording can be found just by going to the webpage, aussietechheads.com.au. Click on podcast section and you will find the video on the front of the webpage. Now, thanks to Brad and all those guys at techwebcast.info. Uh, we replay their show, which is recorded on Saturdays. We replay their show before Aussie Tech Heads every Thursday night. And uh, they've got great guests. Every week they've got guests, and uh, it doesn't look like uh, slowing down. Brad books out weeks in advance. So, um, you know, go and have a listen to that, techwebcast.info. All right. Now, Will. So, oh, well, but before we before we get into it, we'll start. Eric's not here tonight. He's on his second week of his... Um, Whatever he's doing, he, he's a soiree somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, Shane is bogged down at work. So uh, so because he's over in Western Australia, you know, it's, it's still sunshine and it's still work time over there for him. So he's, uh, he's had some impromptu meetings or something or so whatever. So it's just the two of us, Will. Back to the, back to the glory days. So, <laughs> and so we'll, we'll get... Yes. Sorry? I was going to say time travel 100 episodes back. That's right. <laughs> All right. Now we better uh, get into. It. Have you got your show notes up there, or do you want me to um, kick it off? Uh, so I'm, 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 I'm fine. Well, I'm as organised as I usually am. So you know. All right. <laughs> well, I'll kick it I'll, off. I was because I was, uh, was going to. Oh, okay. Off you go. <laughs> oh, I, don't, I don't mind. Whatever you want. All right. Um, let's just let me turn you down a bit. Actually, you are a little bit coming through a little bit screamy. So I'll just turn you down. All right. Good. Well, you're right. While you're adjusting that, I'll uh, do a story quickly on uh, the world's largest TV uh, is made for outdoors, and it's fancy. It's actually made by Porsche. They've just released a 201-inch LED TV. This is designed purely for outdoors. It's uh, 5.1 metres, basically. Uh, it's been labelled the world's largest television, like an actual TV, not those like you know Megatron board things mm. that they play at sporting events. Actual TV. Yeah, right. Uh, it also it also comes on a um, uh, basically it's assembled in an underground bunker, and when you turn it on, it raises up out of the ground. Um, wow! In in thirty seconds, it raises from underground to up above in your yard like this massive big five meter TV. <laughs> uh, it it contains seven hundred and twenty five thousand LEDs that create 4.4 trillion colours that are viewable in daytime as well as night. It comes on a carbon fibre column stand that contains uh, 700 watt subwoofers and the TV can rotate 135 degrees for the best viewing angle. Yeah, well. uh, now, they don't actually... Which is a bit sad, but um, it's one of those deals, I think, if you have to ask, you can't afford it. <laughs> yes, well, I went. I was at Harvey Norman last week, and I looked at one of their big LED TVs. Now it was twenty grand, or just shy of twenty grand. And I think would well, that would have been? Oh, I'm not sure how big it was. Now I can't remember, but it was massive. Would it be, would it have been like eighty five centimeters, or eighty five inches, or something? Yeah, would it be something like that? Eighty five 
five inch, something like that, yeah. But like, they it do was... do 100 inch, but I don't think they LEDs. I think they only do 100 inch in plasmas. Because it was, it was one of the only times, like I said, stood in front of it and everything. And I tell you, it gives you a sense of movement, like a bit of motion. Uh, you know, like you stood there and you think, oh, geez, I, I felt like it's actually moving. Like, you know how you get that feeling? And I thought, yeah, that's pretty cool because you don't normally get that from a TV. You know, you go into IMAX and you might... Your entire, your entire peripheral is is taken up by this yeah, yeah. giant... Yeah, so it was pretty cool. It was pretty cool. But that was 20 grand, so I'd hate to think uh, how much that, that one you're talking about is. That'd be, yeah. Yeah, well, it's Thousands. 201 inch. Of yeah, course, massive. they're assuming. I mean, I wouldn't fit in some backyards. If you ever go into Forest Lake and some of the new Springfield Lakes areas, the yards aren't even five metres wide, so I don't even know where you'd put it. <laughs> no. <laughs> maybe you could swing out from the roof of the house or something, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Mounted on the neighbour's... Yeah. Their wall or something. Oh yeah, this is true. Yeah, that that's massive. But uh, TVs. Look, I heard. Oh, I think we said last week that they, there's rumours that you know 3D TVs are pretty much on the way out. Even um, I didn't really go for them myself. I think, but... I think they'll hang around. I think they'll hang around. I mean, there are still you know advantages of it, and I think people will still buy them for the gimmicky value, especially if it's you know say new. Family, they've just got a pay raise. You know, he's got a promotion. He wants to spend his money. So, look, they will sell, but they're certainly their heyday is certainly been and gone. But I think oh, there's not enough broadcasts. You know, like I know the Queen broadcast in 3D. Like that was that, <laughs> that was uh, great, wasn't it? I'm sure. I'm sure that was one of the better better 3D presentations of the year. But uh, I don't yeah. know if we have the, the available digital bandwidth to broadcast in HD and. We can hardly broadcast in HD, so you know. Mm, yeah, I know. It's just rubbish. Supercars just got their contract. Hang on. Hang on. Say that last sentence again. I was going to say the V8 Supercars just got their contract renewed, but it's pretty much standard def. It's, you know, they don't, they don't do anything in HD, even though they've got four channels. Yeah, well, why? Yeah, because I think, uh, look, I read an article about, you know, how because my gripe all the time is, you know, Channel 9 will show the cricket and the footy, the NRL, on the standard deaf channels. This is my gripe for for years. and But then, you know, come news time, say in the summer when the cricket's on, come news time, they'll, they'll, yeah. they'll flick the cricket onto Gem, and then, oh, it's brilliant picture for half an hour. And then you go back to standard yeah. deaf. But it must be some... It proves that they've got HD cameras. It means their cameras are HD, mm. so... It must be. I mean, they're, they're transmitting the same signal. It's just being yeah. downsampled at the same. I can't believe that it. I can't believe that it's some sort of legislation that's preventing them from doing it. I know at some stage when it first all happened, I know that there was legislation saying that uh, so a quite a high percentage, if you had an HD channel, quite a high percentage of your shows must be. Uh, HD, and that and that's why. Remember ABC Twenty Four. That's why the, the news took over that channel because a lot of because news is current, and as everything current these days is, you know, H- HD. So that there was no problems there. But I think that's. I, don't I think know. that's what killed, like, but that has. I mean, that must have changed because you look at like Jam. You know, it's mm. all Jam uh, and uh, Mate, and that. they'll do all the older shows, and they're still in hate. Well. They're not, but they still broadcast HD as well. So yeah. that well, possibly has changed over the years as well. You know, like you get you turn the gem and you get a good you get good two and a half hours of carry on up the Kyber or something. You know, great quality <laughs> quality quality, uh, <laughs> quality champagne yeah, comedy. Absolutely. But you I know. remember uh, it would have been. Um, I was looking when I was in Melbourne, so ninety nine two thousand. Um, the standards were twelve minutes of ads for every sixty minutes of television. Um, so that's clearly changed. Yeah, that's no, that's no longer. It's about, that's about the other way around now, isn't it? <laughs> it's reversed. Pretty it's much. Reversed. But yeah, so anyway, um, yeah, so big screen TVs, eh? Put them in your backyard. I used to like putting the TV out by the pool, you know, you jump in the pool, watch the cricket and all this sort of stuff. That was always good. Yeah, that never ended up. <laughs> that was good. That was good. All right, now uh, let's get into another one. I've got my little first story of the day. Is it, it's a BlackBerry story, yes. <laughs> They've actually... Uh, yeah. Did you get this one? You love, Black, yeah. you love BlackBerry. <laughs> it's funny how wherever you go anywhere and you see some of the BlackBerry go, oh, jeez, he doesn't know what he's doing. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, so, uh, they have bigger market share than Nokia now, so go figure. 
Yeah, right. Well, anyway, Rim gets 15,000 new BlackBerry 10 apps in three days. They're smashing it, smashing it. The rush of new apps resulted from Rim's Portathon events, which encouraged developers to take any applications not already compatible with BlackBerry 10 and port them over to the new platform. The events, uh, which started on January 11 and lasted just over 37 hours, were open to developers porting either legacy BlackBerry apps or apps built for Android. Uh, Rim said it will offer developers at least $100 for each ported app that is ultimately approved by RIM's team and submitted to the BlackBerry app world storefront. The, st- the uh, number of stored, the number of approved apps has not been determined by RIM. The company said it will hold one final portathon on January 18. So if you missed out on the first one, come on, port on, port off, have a port off. And uh, <laughs> so that's uh, BlackBerry 10 launch, well, the, the, the uh, impending launch, the intended impending launch on January 30. But you can't wait for that one, hey? Who's getting the BlackBerry? Yo. <laughs> then the lounge goes quiet. It goes silent. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> All right. Now, look, now, as Eric's not here this week, I thought I would come in with some Apple stories. Apple cuts orders for iPhone parts. Dun, dun, dun. What's going on here? A couple of jovial customers there. Now, uh, Wall Street. This is, yes, yeah, so as I said, this, uh, this story was actually submitted by Eric someone. Anyway, so Wall Street <laughs> Journal. <laughs> so hi, Eric, whoever you are. The Wall Street Journal has written, has written Apple's orders for the iPhone 5 screens for January, March quarter, for example, have dropped to roughly half of what the company had previously planned to order. Now, this is where it gets funny, and this is where we all, this is what we all pay out. Uh, so this is how it's written. Have dropped to roughly half of what the company had previously planned to order. Two of the people said. Just two people said that. <laughs> Just two. Go and have a look at the article. It, it's ridiculous. Also cut, also cut orders for components other than screens, according to one of the people. Oh, dear, oh, dear. That must be right. Oh, yeah. The person that placed the orders, see? Yeah, the people, <laughs> the, the people are right. They're always right. But, I mean, why? I don't know. I don't like stories like that when they just, you know, they, they could say, oh, jazz it up, couldn't they? Like a, an insider, a purchasing insider or something like that, you know? Miss, could not just make up a name, Mr. Blocks, Mr. Johns or something? <laughs> Can't they, you know, why not Mr. Hong? But uh, in the 2012 third quarter, Apple held 14.6% of worldwide smartphone shipments, down from a peak of 23% in the fourth quarter of 2011 and the first quarter of 2012. That's according to IDC. Samsung share, meanwhile, rose to 31.3% in the third quarter of uh, last year, compared with 88 in the third quarter of 2010. So Samsung is going gangbusters, aren't they? They go crazy, <laughs> crazy. Well, they're the, the, basically the benchmark between them and uh, HTC now. That's pretty much. So it's almost. Do you think it's almost at the point now? Like you know how Apple has all the hysteria about the launch of their products. I think I think Samsung has got to the stage now. I think they're big enough now to to create the hysteria. You know, new product. You know, thirty billion people going woo. So um, well, that's, you know. it. that's the thing. Uh, you look at like the, as I said, the the Galaxy Note two, which is what I'm, I'm on at the moment. You know, the I was watching what was it the uh, iPhone ad that's out at the moment. They're talking about um, having a uh, uh, what do they call it a do not disturb feature. Oh, okay, right. You know, like, so you can say don't ring between these times when I'm sleeping or whatever. Right. You know, like the end. The Android phones have that forever, but you can even go one step further and have it so that, you know, once you put the phone into a certain location, like if it's near a window and it recognises the GPS, it will put it into do not disturb mode. Oh, yeah, that's pretty good. Uh, you know, like they're, they're, they're pushing stuff like that, and uh, Apple is getting to that point where they're just releasing the same thing every year with, a, you know, mm. a, a little bit of this and a little bit of that. They're not actually really innovating. They... They were innovating. They were they were actually, you know, they were actually putting some effort into it. But now they're just relying on their fanboys, effectively, and that's what happened with their Macs. That's what happened with you know, mm. and that's why 
up until four years ago, they were a small company because, and they're going to be exactly the same thing again in a couple of years if they're not careful. Mm. They had a bit of a spurt, and uh, yeah, so yeah, but you know, like they're still a massive company. Like for mine, at the, at this point in my tech life, I suppose. You know, like uh, my my home systems, PCs, all the way, home, Windows Home Server, uh, Windows 7, soon to be Windows 8. I haven't done it yet, <laughs> even though I tweeted the other day I was, I was just about to do it. I didn't have the guts because um, I wanted to. Yeah, that. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't done it yet, Will. <laughs> no, well, what, 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 what happened is why I pulled the pin on that the other day was because I've got the Windows 7 drive, like the normal Seagate. Uh, five and a not five and a quarter the you know normal Seagate hard drive three and a half whatever they are, yeah. And I uh, got that in the machine and I also put the SSD in. But before I put Windows 8 on, I want to unplug. I want to just just disconnect the the Seagate drive. So because I've had a situation once where I have format formatted a machine uh, with another drive in yeah. there, and then the the system drive became became drive D. I couldn't change it. So and everyone knows that that's going to cause a hassle. So um, I'll, I'll unplug the... Use Petition Manager, you can change it. Yeah, I've had that happen. Oh, That's no. what I was wary about when I was upgrading to Windows 8 because it said, do you want to remove uh, just program files or do you want to remove program and personal files? It didn't say what drive. It didn't say anything. I'm like, because uh, I've got what, one drive with the petition in it. I'm yeah. like, okay, let's just remove programs and see what happens. And it turns out that's all it did. It removed the program directory. So I ended up with like, you know, 90% of the crap I still had on the drive. Now, you also found out that you couldn't upgrade a 32 bit system to a 64 bit mm-hmm. system. You have to attach. I did, the, uh, I did the, the deal where you can go to, what is it, Windows Upgrade Offer.com, I think it is. You go there, you sign up for. Uh, say that you bought a computer in the last 12 months and it doesn't ask you for verification or anything. Uh, so you get a discount code which will give you Windows 8 for 15 bucks. So I thought, okay, cool, I can handle that. So mm. I legitimately bought a version of Windows for once. And, uh, but anyway, uh, and so I did that and, you know, I was reading through how it comes in 64, but I thought, okay, well, I must ask you somewhere or it must be intelligent enough to figure out which one you want or given yeah. the fact they were actually going to ditch Windows 8 uh, 32 and 64 bit completely, I thought, okay, maybe they've done that. So anyway, I installed it, went through, yeah, recognized this 3 gig of RAM at the end of it all. I'm like, hang on a minute. Okay, fine. Let's figure out how to upgrade. So I did a bit of Googling around and turns out um, you can't upgrade from 32 bit 7 to 64 bit 8 unless you purchase a CD, which is an extra $25. But then you'd have Download, to... But then you'd have to do yeah, a clean install. You wouldn't yeah, be able to upgrade well, no, it anyway. Yeah, exactly. That's that's the stupid part about it. Apparently, if you're on 64-bit and you do the mm. download, it will upgrade. It will continue to be a 64-bit. But if you want to upgrade to 64-bit from a 32-bit, you've got to order the CD. Yeah, right. <laughs> but 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 you, so you can't download the 64-bit anywhere. Is that what you're saying? No, it doesn't. Well, it. See, when it doesn't actually, what it does is you install the Microsoft the Microsoft Upgrade Wizard, yeah. and then it automatically downloads the files to install. So you don't have a choice at any point of what you're actually installing. Yeah, right, right. So, so what are you going to do? You're going to just suffer? Well, not suffer. <laughs> you're just going to go thirty-two bit, or what are you doing? I'm going to try. Seeing as the system's completely unusable and like literally unusable at this point. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to download a copy that just happens to be floating around the internet of Windows 7 64-bit, yep. and then I won't even bother. Uh, I won't bother putting a serial number. I won't bother registering or anything. I'll literally just once that's installed, I'll then install Windows 8 again and see if it. Because I'm not even sure. Yeah. Yeah, like, like I can I can give you a copy of the 64-bit because I've got a copy, but I'm not even sure if that key will work. Because the one, because uh, mine, yeah, mine must mine would be probably a clean install. You could try it if you wanted to, but yeah, I don't know. But anyways, oh, Windows Seven doesn't matter. Well, I'm not going to worry about a key for Windows Seven anyway. I'm just going to install it because you've got 21 days or something to activate it. So I'll just install it without a key, and then uh, once it's installed, I'll put the Windows Eight install over the top of it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fair enough. But it'll still be 32 bit, so that you're happy with that then? 64. I'll use this, I'll use Windows Seven Sixty Four. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Okay. Yep. 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 So you reckon that'll work? Well, if it doesn't, then I'll just 
format you, of again and put Windows 7 64 bit on with and not even worry about Windows 8 and yeah. playing the Microsoft see if I can get fifteen dollars back. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Talking about Microsoft. Uh, Microsoft's on the hunt for killer Windows phone app. There they go. Now tell me, just for those on the video, I thought that was um that was what's his name? It'll come to me. It'll come to me. Uh, What's the well, deal? The dude from the no, I thought that was um, Wendell Saylor when I, when I first looked oh. at it. <laughs> but anyway, uh, uh, the, the, glo- uh, the global competition will see 64 apps from around the world battle it out in a series of elimination rounds via public voting. Oh, the best and fairest. The last app standing will then... <laughs> will then feature in a prime time TV ad- advertisement in the US. So that would sell you a couple of copies, wouldn't it? If you if it was good enough, that would sell you heaps. So the competition is open to developers worldwide and will accept new and pre-existing apps. All runners-up will receive a Nokia Lumina uh, 920. Is it Lumia? Luma. What is it? Lumia. 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 Lum- How do you pronounce that? It's not Lumina. Lumina? No, there's no oh, end. It's... Well, I don't know, Lumia. That'll do. Um, one of those yellow things. Our smartphone and a one-year dev center subscription. App submissions will be judged based on equal weighting of user ratings and app quality with a focus on how new Windows Phone 8 features are implemented. Oh, yes, good stuff. How developers will need to... New developers will need to have their app published at the Windows Phone Store by March 5th. So you get a bit of time there to, to get coding. Uh, public voting will take place between 19th of March and the 8th of April, uh, 2013. Go, Wendell. All right. <laughs> I, don't know, I, don't know, I don't know what Wendell's got to do about with um, coding, but uh, anyway. <laughs> All right. Um, what else you got, Will? Anything else? Uh, yeah, I was actually just looking at uh, the return of MySpace. Oh, is that that's, that's, yeah, I think I joined up to that new MySpace. It didn't do nothing for me. <laughs> no. uh, from what I can tell, it's not much more than a glorified movie, uh, song streaming site now. Um, it was, uh, of, of course, you know, Justin Timberlake's involved with it now. Um, and he just happened to release his new single, um, Suit and Tie, at the same time they open the new myspace.com if you want to check it out yeah go to new.myspace.com because they're too stupid to make it one word um and basically it's it from what i can tell it's myspace um just worse which i didn't actually think was possible but you know they've managed to do it so that's pretty cool um you can sign up you, you can i don't know does it work with, with your old uh Login or is it going to be new? Oh, I know oh, you can sign in. Okay, you can sign in with to MySpace with Facebook. Let's do that. Oh, there we go. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so you got your library. Yeah, it's the same. Pretty much, just oh, yeah. Looks different. <laughs> it's the same. Yeah. It looks uh, different. That's owned by, you know, uh, what are they saying? It's basically something. When I read somewhere that it's basically a glorified music streaming site. Now, apparently the terms and conditions are really nasty. Yeah, okay. Um, so you might want to read those. Uh, but yeah, there's, there's been a lot of complaints over those. So, uh, But the idea is they don't claim ownership of your content in terms of... Well, apparently. Well, the terms of service state that by posting any content through or in conjunction with the MySpace services, you hereby grant MySpace a limited license to use, modify, delete, add to, combine with other content, public, publicly perform, publicly display, reproduce, transmit, sell, distribute, and otherwise exploit such content. So even though they don't own it, they might as well. Mm, and, and something that I've noticed <laughs> just by scrolling through, it's a sideways scroll. Uh, oh, yeah, it's the whole thing. I think it's a whole, it's a whole new, uh, it's a whole new concept. There you go. I don't mind that. That's, that. More, that's like a, a flipboard, I think. Was that? How do you get back over to where um, I was? Yeah. Isn't there a quick? Oh, one? No. Yeah. Anyway, like, who cares? It's like Windows. It's like Windows. You probably to press the escape key to use your desktop. Hmm. Probably. <laughs> yeah. She's all right, isn't she, Taylor Swift? All right. Now, what else is going? on? <laughs> 
<laughs> All right. Uh, what oh. else have I got here? I've got something else. Oh, David Bowie. He's looking a bit mean there, isn't he? Oh, yeah, Taylor. All right. Now, let's uh, get back into <laughs> some stories before we're getting uh, waylaid there. Now, Vodafone, you know, crazy John. He, he died, yes. didn't he? He died when he was 42. Ah, uh, yeah, a bit of a... But no good. But anyway, Vodafone has dumped Vodafone. Crazy John. He's, uh, Vodafone has announced mm. it will close and rebrand Crazy John stores across Australia by the end of February. So that's all happening really soon. The second is a the second in a recent move by an Australian telco to operate under a single banner after Optus last year revealed it would end its agreement with Telechoice. Uh, Crazy John. Johns was born in 1991 and was purchased by Vodafone in 2008. The telco did not confirm how many of its approximately 400 staff would be affected. I'd say, obviously, probably all of them if they're going to dump it. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Except for those three guys in the suits, they've got to fill out the rest of the contractual obligations for the year. <laughs> yeah, that's right, yes. <laughs> they've got a lot of footy games to go to still. Uh, um, yeah, so, but I think, look, but it looks like they're all going to be trying to be redeployed somewhere, so that's all good. Revenue for the second half of 2012 ended September 30, was down just under. 15%, and its customer numbers fell from 3.25 million in July uh, to 3.17 million in, in September. So overall, Vodafone has lost in excess of half a million customers over the past 18 months. So it's a lot of people to lose, isn't it? Like, um, yeah. I it would be more. Yeah, well, I think that's, uh, that's only the last 18 months. I think they've been losing them hand over fist even before then. So They've got nobody left to lose. See, that's why the numbers are slowing down. Yeah, because when you look at it, like I, I don't know, is what Vodafone's competitive w probably with Optus? That nah, not even close. What do you mean? They're, they're what are they? They're cheaper. No, oh, well, no, they're dearer now. They're charging you for everything. They now charge you for data. If they send you an over-the-air update, they charge you for the data used to send you the update. Yeah, that's tough. Yeah, that's a bit tough. You know, they're they're now charging. The new contracts, if you look, are charging to send a call as well as receive a call. Send a text message as well as receive a text message. Yeah, right. Yeah, that's a bit rough. Uh, yeah, that's no good. Anyway, Vodafone, what are you, what's going on? Okay, crazy John. Because remember the crazy Ron? They, they went to court, didn't they? The Rons and the Johns? Because... Oh, <laughs> but again... Uh, good reason, <laughs> you, hey, what was that? For good reason, I think I've forgot about that. <laughs> yeah, probably. All right. Now, uh, if you want to follow up more of the ingoings and comings of these stories, you can because, well, all of mine anyway, they're at, on the show notes at aussietechheads.com.au. Uh, just navigate yourself to the podcast, navigate yourself to show notes, and you'll be able to find them in case you're interested in following up something that we've been talking about. Uh, if if you can't find something and it's one of Will's stories, well, he just has Firefox tabs, which you can't find, so you'll have to email him. <laughs> so he... I, uh, I, I, I hate doing it, and I really want to get my show notes sorted, but it involves, like, I don't know, walking into the door and having a computer that actually works, so... <laughs> <laughs> one day. One, day. <laughs> one of these days. One of these days, Will. One of these days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and also, so if you did want to email us, you can, uh, Eric, Shane, Eric with a K, Shane with a Y, Glenn or Will at aussietechheads.com.au. And don't forget, uh, little Twitter, little Twitter news hound, he's at Aussie Tech News, and he goes out and he'll, he'll pluck a couple of news stories every half hour and, and chuck them in your Twitter feed if that's what you love doing and also the paper aussietechheads.com.au forward slash paper and it's like a, just a little magazine style thing with uh just collates different stories from the from the from the day that have been tweeted and facebooked and all that little text stories and so they're all relevant they all come from the the good the good names you know the the, the big names the mashables and and the, the tech crunches and also uh popular stories of anyone that aussie tech heads follows that's right. I think that's how it works. So that's, that's a good little thing. It's a good little thing. Go and have a look at it. All right. Now, oh, well, we'll, we'll continue on with Telstra, I think. Now, there's been a scam. Now, I have to tell you about this just in case you get one <laughs> because it's, apparently it's pretty, uh, pretty, nasty, pretty nasty. Well, they're all nasty, uh -oh. aren't they? 
the scam, which uh, which have ha- uh, which appeared to have been first reported by Whirlpool users yesterday morning, has prompted an official notification from Telstra and probably an investigation. Oh, yesterday, up like Monday, I think it was. Oh, yep. Um, yeah, well, that, oh, yeah, sorry, I just, yeah, the story's probably a couple of days old now. Uh, customers reported that the email, which looked something like that, um, uh, customers put the email promised a PDF file of the bill, but instead attached a zip file that contained an executable. It also had a fake account number, but carried significant Telstra branding and links that appeared to go to legitimate Telstra URLs. The timing of the scam mail-out coincided with a legitimate marketing email from Telstra urging customers to switch to electronic billing. Telstra urged users that uh, received that if you have received suspicious billing emails, you must go directly to the My Account page through the Telstra website and not click on any links in emails they, you believe fake. So go past go, do not p- go to jail. Do not lose money. Yeah, well, they, they recommend that anyway. Even for, I mean, when they send you a bill, they just send you a PDF. Mm. And if you want to find it more, they don't, there's no links on the bill. It's all done. You've got to go through my account. Now, ironically, I actually did receive one of these. I received a legitimate bill, although it might as well have been fake because it's completely wrong. <laughs> uh, and then uh, <laughs> I got new handsets and they added every possible charge and sort of didn't take anything off. And uh, Anyway. And the bill was for like three thousand dollars, right? Um, and so it might as well have been fake. Yes. <laughs> um, so I received the real bill, and then the next, well, the same day later that day, I think I received that marketing email. Yeah, right. And then I actually got my bill sorted, and they sent me another bill. And then about five minutes after this, or before I actually got the official bill, I got that saying it was the email bill. And it's only because I was talking to the guy at the time that I didn't click on it. But because I was expecting it to come through while I was talking to him, um, I said, oh, I've got it. He goes, oh, hang on, I haven't sent it yet. Yeah. And that was that. But if I wasn't <laughs> talking to him, I probably yeah. would have just opened it because I was actually expecting it. Yes. You know what I mean? Yeah. So you would have opened the zip. You would have unzipped. I probably wouldn't have. <laughs> I would have sent a zip file and went, yeah, hang on, that's probably not right. But I certainly I didn't process it because mm. I was expecting it to come through. But so some, I probably would have double clicked and it would have popped up said do you want to use WinZip or WinRA and I would have hang on a minute. But sometimes like, you know, if you're expecting it, you can you go on autopilot, you know, and just go, Oh zip, yeah, yeah, double click, oh and then it comes up then oh yeah, PDF or whatever. Uh, or Xy in this case. And uh yeah, and you just do it. But yeah, hopefully by the time you got to the Xy stage, you know, you bloody oh. you, you got your you got your where where's abouts on and you don't do it. It's a uh, Actually, one thing too about while we're talking about scams and things is something in my Twitter feed. Uh, I can't find if it's an app. I can't find what's going on. But about once a day, something's posting uh, a thing saying through this website I've made you know eleven hundred dollars today or something. Oh, I know about um, them. Yeah. There you go. There you it's go. posting in my Twitter feed, annoying me, and I can't find that where it's coming from. Well, the last couple of days. I've been well. The last couple of weeks, actually, I've, I've let them go until tonight. I've been every. I come back. I come to the Mac and every now and then, you know, and I've because I've got Skype on the Mac there as well. Just you know, you can, if just the Aussie Tech Head Skype. By the way, if if you want to call into the show live, you can just by uh, uh, hooking into the is the uh, what do you call it? The login or the handle or the contact name of Aussie Tech Heads, and you can call into the show live. And if we can, we'll take your call. So uh, we can do that. But yeah, so this this Skype account has been getting these phone calls from strange places like uh, mm.pc and sgst.pc. And I thought, what are these things? You know? So anyway, I thought, oh, they, they call. So I thought, well, I'm, I'm going to call it back. No, no, actually, I saw it calling tonight before the show. I saw it. I said, right, I'm going to answer you. I'm going to see what you want. You know, what are you ringing me for? So I thought, I'd answer it. I answered it. And it was, it was automated. And it was an automated scam. For, you know, oh, your computer's not running as fast as it should be. Please log into blah, 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 blah. And you can help fix it up or something, and all this sort of rubbish. So they're doing it over Skype now. So, oh, I, yeah, I know. So I blocked Another them. Another reason I Skype. <laughs> <laughs> I blocked them. You know. Oh, look, Skype's yeah, not... Yeah, here it is. Skype's not too Sweet. bad. I earned $61 so far doing surveys. Apps.facebook.com. 
So, yes, if you see that in my Twitter feed, don't click on it because I don't know. Well, actually, I'll tell you what. Click on it and tell me what app is, will you? <laughs> do you do you ever I'm like? Not going to. <laughs> do you, do you ever do you ever like you see these little things in the in the twitters and in your emails and you go mm, I might just click on that in the with the iPhone <laughs> you know see where it takes you. Yeah. I do it on my Android. I click on it. And it says this browser is not supported. Oh, isn't that disappointing? Oh well. Yeah. So <laughs> so if it's something nasty, well, oh, hopefully chances are it's not going to infect your phone, but because it's meant for the PC. So yeah, that's what I do. I'll, I'll get the phone out and I just go. Hey. They'll, they'll get onto that. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure they will. They'll, they'll probably have little redirects if it's an iOS. They'll go, oh, go to this site then. Yeah. But uh, look, I, I came across a picture of uh, you today, Will. Um, <laughs> come across a picture just of you. Just can't come back. No, no, just hard at work, <laughs> as usual. And so, <laughs> oh, yeah. No, now I what? I have to ask that one. Oh, sorry. No, not really. <laughs> now, what, 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 oh, look at the old monitor you've got there. Jeez. And the old dot matrix printer there behind you. And I have four of those monitors in the spare room, and I actually have about four or five of those printers brand new in box sitting in the shed. Oh, get rid of them. Get rid of them. But anyway, no, what, what, this, what I pulled this little, little picture out for was, I don't know if you heard, but there's a U.S. programmer who was, who was allegedly caught offloading his data-sensitive job to a freelancer in China. So what was happening is, so Mr. Mr. U.S. citizen... He got he, he secured this job with you know some big firm you know as a programmer and so he went home he was like you know he was uh, contracted so he wasn't an employee so he's contracted and he went home he must have typed in the old Elance and got someone in China and they said yeah we'll do that for you know ten cents and so he goes yeah beauty and so he um, yeah outsourced his contract to China and apparently he was getting paid like something like uh, two hundred thousand dollars. Right from this company, and it was only paying the the Chinese fifty thousand. So apparently, the U.S. company, <laughs> so the U.S. company had discovered a anomaly in its VPN logs, which showed a live unauthorized VPN connection from Shenyang, China. Meanwhile, the 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 developer whose credentials were being used remained in his office in the U.S. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> the the Shenyang connections were occurring almost daily and occasionally spanned the entire working day. Evidence suggested he had the same scam across multiple companies. That's great. That's brilliant. That's brilliant. It was a really scam. He's paid to do a job, and as long as that job gets done, is it really a scam? I think what – well, no, but what I think the sensitive issue here is the uh, the the sensitive data. And the access that yeah. some Chinese might have had. I don't know what sort of sensitive data it is. Everyone's sensitive about their data. You know what they're like, even if it's a library. But, uh, yeah, so anyway, um, so there you go. Quarter after quarter, as this though, quarter after quarter, his performance review noted him as the best developer in the building. <laughs> Hooray! <laughs> oh, snaps for this guy. That's great. That's great. So, um, hence... I mean, I know he's lost his job, but has he kept the money? Well, he would. Why wouldn't he? The job's been done. Yeah, obviously, yeah, there's probably, well, I'm sure, I'm sure in the contract or whatever, maybe there's nothing in the contract to say he couldn't outsource. You know, I don't know. Who knows? Yeah. But anyway. It, it doesn't matter at the end of the day. He's, he's done this at multiple companies. He's made a fortune and he's retired now. I mean, what's that's the big right. deal? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. But isn't that, that's yeah. a... Well. <laughs> yeah, that's a great story. I love it. I love it. I think that's uh, ingenious ingenuity. I love Absolutely. it. <laughs> All right, now while we're while we're in China, yeah, this is one that you'd probably like. Will China's Ill illegal <laughs> World of Warcraft theme park? Have you seen? Oh, yeah. Have you seen it, Will? I've heard about it. The park. Let me let me see if I got any photos here. Oh, there's Wendell. <laughs> Again, well, nothing, and nothing, nothing. China's legit, so of course it's not going to be legit. Yeah, no, Wendell's not there. <laughs> he's, he's not there. Um, let me see. So while I talk, I'm going to get you the photos while I talk to it about it, and and those on the uh, audio on the podcast just have to imagine World of Warcraft. <laughs> now the park features absolutely gigantic War Warcraft statues, themed ride, and a cafe in a castle perched at the top of a massive stone staircase in its Changzhou, China. 
It's called Joyland. Oh, great. <laughs> I think of a better word, Joyland. It's owned by BenQ or something. And Forbes reported <laughs> that it cost $48 million to build, and it's entirely audaciously illegal as a copyright violation, as this article has said there. So, um, yeah, so apparently it's, it's pretty wild. It looks, looks pretty good. I bet what they've done is they've just taken the old, uh, the old illegal Disneyland that they had that wasn't doing very well and just given it a makeover. Or was it the illegal uh, <laughs> Disney World? Or was it the illegal Porsche World? Or was it the illegal... Hmm. Mm. Well, yeah, <laughs> but I don't think somehow it might be, Ill- it might be illegal, but I don't think it's, it's going to make the Chinese take it down. Because as Will was saying, there's, there's hundreds of other Ill- Ill- illegalities, you know, in China. And the side just sitting empty. You, if there's actually a docker I was watching, uh, and China is just creating. They're just continually building. They have, they have thousands and thousands and thousands of residential buildings and office dwellings that are just empty. They just keep creating and keep stimulating your own economy. Mm. They've got theme parks. They've got everything, and they just they create them. They open them. They have an opening weekend. They shut them down. They go and build another one. That's all they do. Well, that's communism. They gotta, they gotta, you know, keep the people. Employed and all that sort of stuff, but I tell you, I tell you, the uh, the pollution's pretty bad over there, isn't it? I, I saw on the news oh. just the other day that the some whatever the pollution index was like ten times or something more than safe, and apparently oh, the interviewer asked some guy, some weather dude, well, what happens if you go out in it? You know, like you know, if it's unsafe, well, what actually happens to you? And he said, well, because that the air is that thick of pollution that the particles are, are thicker and bigger than normal. Oh, hang on. Mm. Garage bands had a cry. If you want this one, do you, do you want to use this device? No. Oh, it kept going. There we go. Uh, sorry about that, podcasters. I think the little garage band just uh, had a little cry, so hopefully that wasn't too long of a break. But uh, where was, what was I saying? Yeah, about the pollution. He was, uh, yeah, so the particles are, are bigger and they're thicker and whatever and heavier. And so they actually uh, lodge in your lungs. So they, they actually, like, you know, when if you're just smaller particles, you yeah. breathe them in, breathe they're them like, out. Like, Sorry, Will? They're like glue. Yeah, right. Well, you don't want to do that. So that's why you see, cause you, you, you see, have a pictures of China. There's no sky. It's just all grey. It looks like a really rainy, cloudy day, but it's not. It's pollution. It's pretty bad over there. Really bad. Disgustingly bad. What's going on? Just leave your car at home, Chinese people. Now, well, uh, well, I think that's the least of their problems. Yeah. Now, do you have any other tabs open there, Will? Yeah, I was just looking. Um, actually, I was, I've been doing a bit of research. Yeah, we use a mobile FPOS machine, and uh, it the last couple of days has been really flaky, and I've been trying to figure out what's going on. It's with the uh, Optus network. And we're not the only ones. A lot of the other mobile companies have been having the same problems. And I've actually just found out, I've just been reading a article about the Perth to Singapore um, optic, well, the, uh, the major cut, uh, major cut, major cable has been cut. It's uh, 10 of the 48 gig wavelengths, so 480 gigs in total uh, has been affected. Um, it has something like one thousand one hundred twenty-six kilometers of cable, and there's something like three hundred and forty-six breaks in it. Yeah, right. So, who's not this? Not sure exactly what's happening. Uh, it's the, it doesn't it affects basically everybody who gets. Mm. Uh, to, it basically affects everybody from let's see, Southeast Asia, Middle East, Western Europe. Uh, northern Germany, Australia, and Japan. Jeez. Hey, so, yeah. uh, so if you've noticed that, uh, which I actually have noticed at home as well, slower downloads and unreliable internet, uh, I think I'm just figuring out why. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's probably all those severed cables. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, it's going to take, um, take anywhere from three days from three days to fix this article is two days old. So any, basically at any point from now, everything should hopefully be restored. So. Mm. All right. Now, here's another one here. Robots are going to the big day out. They will be there. The Rebound Rumble. 
will take place at the Sydney Showground and comprise five teams of high school students from New South Wales, Victoria and Tasmania. Four robots will take part in a what is billed a crazy basketball game, two against two. The basketball court, roughly the size of a standard court, has been modified to include tipping bridges, which the robots have to navigate. So I don't know if these is actually the robots, but they're some robots. Now, each team was initially given a standard box of parts, such as motors and gears, and a list of competition requirements. For example, teams were only allowed to use certain batteries and given maximum dimensions and weights for how big the robot could be. Teams also had 4K limit on uh, extra parts for the robots. That's $4,000. The robots in tomorrow's competition, or whenever whenever this was, has the big day up been on? Or is that... that is I don't know when that's on, but anyway. The, the robots in the competition are around 1.5 metres high and weigh around 55 kilograms. On open road, they would be capable of moving up to 70 kilometres an hour. Jeez, that's fast, isn't it? That's fast. I wouldn't that's want to be cool. in. Yeah. Uh, the matches will run for 20 minutes, 10.30 a.m. and last two and a half minutes each. Any longer, and they said the batteries in the robots would run out. So we don't want that happening. Really? Your batteries, dude. <laughs> they, they need you down there, Will. I want for you to play with. You can only play with it for two minutes, and it's going to take six hours to recharge. Get Will on standby. <laughs> the battery man. <laughs> yes. Uh, now, Microsoft teases Surface Pro as 90 day deadline nears. Now, remember when the Surface was released? They said, oh, we'll be releasing the Pro within 90 days. Well, 90 days is nearly upon us. It is, it is nearly here. Uh, so what happened is what sparked a bit of this sort of bit of buzz was a tweet from a Panos a Pane. And he is the general manager of the Microsoft Surface line. And he tweeted, on my way to the factory to check out Surface Pro coming off the line, arriving in the coming weeks. So it's all a buzz. It's all a buzz. The Surface Pro. And now, Surface Pro, it will would release um, blah, blah, blah. It's January the 26th. It's 90 days. That's the 90-day deadline. So let's see if it makes the 90 days. Microsoft has not, not refreshed the its Surface Pro page. So no good going there and having a look because it's still the same old stuff saying coming early in 2013. The Pro will be powered by an Intel processor and rely on Windows 8 Pro. This combination will let the device run legacy Windows application, the fully functional traditional desktop leading some Microsoft bulls. Bulls. Leading some Microsoft bulls. So hope it will it will sell better than its predecessor. The bulls. The bulls are out. Oh, do they have a running of the Microsoft Bulls? Oh, what? <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. Yeah. Yeah, so I used, I, I touched and, and uh, felt and licked a Surface the other day. And uh, cause I don't get out much, but I did this last week. I went to, <laughs> I went to uh, Harvey Norman and I had a little play. And I don't know, I, I found, I thought that the Surface was a bit laggy. I didn't expect it to be a bit laggy. Uh, I thought so. Yeah. I felt exactly the same. I had a lot of success using one of the high-end PCs with a like 24-inch touchscreen monitor. It was a far better experience than using the Surface. Well, I'm hoping that this, the, the Surface Pro will be the answer because if they can get that right, I reckon that's, that's going to be the killer. It'll be the killer. It's Microsoft. Every second version is the one to use, so there we go. <laughs> but, you know... Uh, the Pro, it's going to integrate with, it's, it'll be a laptop, but it's a touch laptop sort of thing. Uh, it'll, be, it'll be the killer. It's the killer. And I know Eric doesn't no, well, doesn't believe right. me, but... <laughs> I mean, it'll be interesting. Like, there's a lot of other features coming to that too. If you're marketing it as a tablet, it's got to have a good battery life. If you're marketing it as a laptop, it's got to have a good keyboard. So, I mean, yeah, well, I mean, time will tell. You know, I mean, Asus Transformers kind of really filled that spot if you think about it, because it's both. So... Mm. Yeah, I don't know. What I don't yeah, know. I, look, I, I liked I, I liked the clip on keyboard. I thought that was quite good. It was pretty sturdy. You know, you got it anywhere near where it was supposed to go. It would. Sorry. Does it add to your battery life, or is it just the keyboard? Just just the keyboard. I thought it was just the keyboard. I don't know. So you look at like the Asus Transformer, and you get like eight hours battery life in the tablet, and if you hook it up to the keyboard, you get another eight hours battery life. So. Oh, that's pretty sweet. You know. What's that, the Transformer? Um, 
Yeah, the Asus Transformer. What do they sell for? So, out of curiosity. Um, I think I've seen. I oh, don't quote me. I think I've seen them for about four fifty, four ninety nine, something like Jeez, that. You're kidding. And then, what can they? So, does the screen fold back on itself? On on the. Well, you take this. You just pull them apart. You can oh, just pull okay. the keyboard off the off it, so you can oh, have sweet. either yeah, either a keyboard or you know, either a laptop or just a tablet, depending on what you want to do. Oh, I'm going to have to look into that, Will. That's great. Oh, and thanks for your tip last week about the CS2 <laughs> downloads. Worked a treat. <laughs> oh, you got them, did you? <laughs> <laughs> sure did. I wouldn't know. I haven't covered it because uh, you know I put Windows 8 on. Yeah. Um, um, Look, I read a I read an article about that, and they, and Adobe saying, well, no, they're not free. They're for people who have purchased the the suite, and they're just shutting down the the authentication servers, as you said. But I mean, if they're publishing so keys, funny. if they're publishing, <laughs> yeah, downloads and keys on a public site with no lim- no restricted access, and they're giving you the keys. That's free. I yeah. don't care what you say. That's free. <laughs> <laughs> that's free to me. But uh, yeah, but, exactly. Yeah, look, I haven't installed most of. I've only installed. I just quickly installed InDesign because I had a few app, a few things I needed to do with that because uh, I purchased a couple of things that were InDesign um, data files. But yeah, but apparently, yeah, it was CS2. That must be what, about two thousand five. It was just a bit old for these data, so that still oh, didn't yeah. work for me. So um, I don't know what I'm going to do now. I think a quick play with was. Uh uh, what's it called? The video editing one. Premiere. Um, Premiere. Yeah, had a play with that. That's and good. And I actually prefer it over the new one. The new one's horrible to use because I I downloaded a demo of the demo of that and I couldn't figure anything out, so I mm. gave up on that. But yeah, I actually the CS2 one. It's it's fast. It's easy to use. There's a couple of codecs when it's supported, so you just download the codex. Done. You know. Yeah. Yeah, that's all right. Oh, yeah. Well, I think I've, I used Premiere Pro or Premiere when it wasn't even in this bundled, you know, as a CS2 business as they, the jazz is now. Yeah. Just when it was Premiere. And look, I, I didn't mind it. I, I did some uni assignments with that, and that was that was great. It, it worked really good. And that's where I think I learned how to use, is it what they call linear video editing? And uh, sort of, got, yeah, you got your sort of head around it. And that, yeah, Premiere, that was good. So you just, you, if you miss... Yep. I was going to say that's why I think I like Movie Maker because it's for for now Movie Maker does everything I want to do, but it's the same thing. It's linear video editing. It's simple. It's click and drag. It's it's you know mm. what they call WYSIWYG. What you see is what you get. You know, and I think that's what I liked about. I've tried Sony Vegas and I've tried some of the other ones, and they're just I I can't figure them out. Oh, Vegas is good. That's what I use now. It's great. Love oh, it. Probably okay with you get around it, but yeah. Yeah, I need you need ones that have the the video and the audio track, and you can separate it easy. Uh, yeah, yeah, it just makes life easy when you just even if you you know I can put in a an overlay. That's how I do the show uh, for the for the video. You know, I put the the bottom thirds in with the Vegas and yeah. just Watching easy. You do it the other night after, nice. after we finished the show the other night. Glenn was was doing a quick tutorial for us noobs, and uh, I. Did exactly the same thing. I opened up my Vegas. I did everything he did, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you so, got to. You got to have a bit of a... of. You got to have t- talent, skill, you know, um, vision, you know, artistic flair. None of which I possess. So. <laughs> None of which I have either. <laughs> I just, I just learnt, learnt it. I, I'd watch many YouTube videos, many a YouTube video. Now, what other tabs you still got to open, Will? I was really excited. Telstra is expanding their 4G data networks. Uh, they're looking for roaming partners. Okay, this is getting interesting. Uh, Telstra is pursuing international roaming agreements. Oh. Great. So basically what they're doing is they're in pursuing international roaming agreements for their 4G data uh, in places like, I don't know, Hong Kong, for example, where they're allowing 4G customers to roam on their on the native 4G network. On the upside, you're only going to be charged a standard 3G data rate, which is 1.5 cents per kilobyte. Oh. If you do the math, that will amount to fifteen dollars thirty-six per meg. Oh, jeez! <laughs> so, if That's you rubbish. were to send, say one email, you know, an average email, yeah. you probably has just cost you about seven dollars. 
Well, you're not going to download the CS2, are you? <laughs> Imagine how no, much it would no longer be free. That'd be it. That'd be <laughs> fifty grand. <laughs> in China, well, especially in China, because you'd walk down to the shop down the corner and buy it for eight cents on a CD anyway. So it doesn't. Well, really, it's kind of. That's right. <laughs> And then take it to take it to Joyland, and you, and you can go copyright crazy. Yeah. <laughs> um, right. Now, last week I, we heard from Leon over in the UK, and we, I think we had a bit of a chat between us about you know, TV licenses and all this sort of stuff. I don't think I mentioned this. I think we we, we had the discussion, but anyway. Uh, just an update from Leon, who you listened to the podcast and, and listened to our how tr- how troubled we were about the the TV licensing <laughs> fees. <laughs> so he's he's explained it, um, just in case you're interested. So he said, "I like him. No, he wouldn't know what they are." <laughs> <laughs> well, you'd have to if you if you got to tell her, you have to. So he said, basically, there are several licenses, a full color, which most people have. This covers you if you have several TVs. But every time you buy anything in a shop that can get a TV signal, you have to give your name and registered address as the records can be checked. Wow. Um, he has said it's a bit annoying when there's a long... Hey? Yeah, but if you buy a TV tuner or a card off eBay, that's not going to happen, is it? Mm, no, I guess not. No, I guess not. But if you bought it in the shop over there, yes. Uh, then we had... Then- they have the black and white licenses for those who have been, who have their old sets or just very old people. Uh, then we have the reduced license if you're blind or partially sighted. Uh, yes, the blind pay as well. The even more bizarre thing here is that seventy-two pound fifty for a blind person color TV and twenty-four pound fifty for a blind person black and white TV. Yeah, there you go. That's every. So if that's reduced, I want if you don't mention what a full dark, full one is. Or? Uh, if you have, I think we might have mentioned that last week. I'm not sure, but no, it, he just goes. The, the, it's, yeah, the 72.50 for a blind person. No, I don't. I can't see that here. But anyway, yeah, no, but, but he ends off with. There you go. 145 pound for a color and 50 pound for black and white. Yeah, but he goes on to say just at, at, in ending that. Um, he, goes, he doesn't mind paying it because the quality of the TV is very good and very worthwhile, which I, I probably would agree. Like if you're getting all the BBC channels, radio as well, TV, radio, well, yeah, that's, that's, that's a good little setup. There's a lot of good mm. stuff over there. So for 150 plus that, 300 bucks a year, what do you pay for Foxtel? 60 a month? Well, that's, that's, what, that's what I was about to say. If you, if you pay the 140, 145 pound a year, um, yeah, I mean, that's it. Even a basic Foxtel package has, has got to be, you know, 40 bucks a month now. Yeah. And so plus, you're looking at $400, $500 easy. Yeah. Well, well, plus the BBC is all in HD and everything, you know. They've got the HD channels going on. So that's good. That's yeah, all good. Um, so, yeah, I mean, if you think about it that way, it's not a bad way to make, not only make TV profitable and with reduced ads, but... It sort of it fills the the gap between pay TV and free TV. Like because you are paying for it, they can provide you a better service because they know they're going to get some sort of return, mm. and they don't have the pressure to provide a pay TV service where they're effectively putting the same stuff on fourteen times a day because they don't have enough shows. Yeah, and that does oh geez, they do repeat, don't they? Like the Fox Hill, and it's all old shows. Like I mean, it's nothing new. And like, if oh, it, that's right, if it fair income, if it wasn't for the sport, they, I don't think they'd exist. Like, you know, they're struggling. I reckon that they're struggling with the movies. They've just reorganised their movie channels. I don't know if you've got Fox or Will, but they've just reorganised movie channels. Um, they're not in, no. like, Showtime and all that anymore, I don't think, because I don't really do it either. But I think it's all changed to, like, more, uh, like, drama movies, thriller movies, love movies and all that, like, genre sort of a setup. Yeah. But, it, you know... I have Fox in... Six years now, at least. Mm. Um, just don't bother. But I was actually just reading some of the. Uh, if you go to, if you're curious, you can go to tvlicensing.co.uk and tells you all the stuff you need to know there. And there's some interesting things. It's like if you're a student, for example, uh, and you live in shared accommodation with one TV, then the $145 comes out of the household expense per year. Like. There's only one person there. If, however, you have your own TV um, 
in that house that you have in your room, you have to pay. Uh, you have to pay for your share on top of that. So let's say there's four people in there, then you'd have to pay thirty-seven dollars on top of that hundred and forty-five to have your own TV. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> yeah. So the, well, okay, I can see how it can become a problem. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, but I suppose as long as you as long as you do it properly, and I. I don't know. Yeah, you got a. Oh yeah. Even if you have a little TV tuner card. To receive your discount, you're obliged to pay, call us on your 75th birthday so that we can refund the money for you. <laughs> what was that? So, so <laughs> uh, obviously, once you're 75, you're you're. Uh, once you're 75, it becomes free, right? So right. if you. If you were 74 and paid your one-year renewal, but it turned out that you turned 75 before that entire year was up, oh. say it was three months to go or something, once you turn 75, you need to contact these guys. You need to call them so that they can refund you the money and not charge you for next year. Oh, good on them. Now, what, what's this part of the site I've got up here? I clicked on a link. Simrag. Is that like Welsh or something? Is that what that would be? Some some rug. C- uh, well, there's a home accessibility. And See what? Yeah, it's, it's another one. Oh, there it is up the top. This page is in Welsh. Would you like to translate it? There you go. So yeah. there you go. Translate. Welsh. So if it's true Welsh, there won't be any Ws in there. I know it's Gaelic, there's no Ws. Well, oh. so, okay, so well, Welsh, I guess, makes sense because that's there. I don't understand. Yeah. The one thing I don't understand with this translating business, with the Google translating, is how does it translate into English sentences? Because every language just, would be different sentence structure, or if they doesn't, because it just knows which language it is. It knows which way around the sentence is structured. When you translate, it just restructures it. That's not always right. It's only probably about ninety percent accurate, but it's accurate Pretty enough good. to make it so you. Yeah, it's pretty good. So you can know. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, all right. Any more tabs, Will, before we go? Um, yeah, we all know, love and love our favourite uh, spy agency, ASIO. You know, they, they're you know, never watching us or never buying us or anything. Um, but just in case you want to know, they're actually publicly saying that we want to have the power to hack into Australia's personal computers and commandeer their smartphones so that we can send viruses to terrorists from your devices. What? Uh, yeah, so basically their plans are, because what's happening is the terrorists are being smart and knowing what, where the viruses are coming from and blocking them before they get there. So basically what they want to do is they want to have uh, ability to take over your devices remotely and send out terror, send terrorists uh, viruses and yeah, things right. like that. What a good idea. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, because you know, there'd be nothing at all wrong with giving Asia that sort of power. Uh, because as it is, they basically, you know, they probably do it anyway. They just don't officially ask for it. But yeah, I mean, that's going to just be a free for all once if something like that ever got through. Um, basically, according to them, the purpose of the power is to allow Asia access to access the computer of a suspected terrorist and other security interests. Well, the problem I is. What are they? What are, what are they, they setting viruses out for anyway? You might like key longing viruses and stuff. Yeah, it'd be stuff like that, I'd imagine. Yeah, right. Um, you know, the, <laughs> apparently it would not. And this is what I don't get. They just finished saying it's so that we can basically spy on suspected people and collect information. And then further down, they basically say, but importantly, the warrant with warrant the warranty. The warrant would not allow ASIO to obtain intelligence. It's like, well, hang on, you just been saying that you wanted to, mm. to, to spy on people, and now you're saying it's not to obtain intelligence. It's, it's like <laughs> it's like SETI at home, but for terror. It's terror yeah, at home. Exactly. We just have a screensaver, and it just turns on all your cameras and your microphones, so that when you're yeah. just, you know doing your day to day business, they can listen to you. Yeah, that's right. Oh, they can do that anyway. Just ask ask Mark. They do that through the through the TV speakers, reverse reverse the things, and oh, through the electricity pipes and everything. 
Um, but no, I have no problems at all spying on phones and computers as it is. I mean, if they, I would be surprised if they didn't do it. Mm. Um, you know, I can crack a cash they do. You know, yeah. emails, whatever. They won't really be traced. But the thing is, doing it underhandedly is one thing. Come out in public saying, we own you now, too bad, is something entirely different. And that's, you look at this whole thing that Gillard's trying to push through about Facebook and Twitter, trying to make them liable for posts that appear um, as part of a, oh, what's he calling it, a bully prevention measure yeah, or something. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. Yeah, it's like, but no. I don't, I don't think anyone listens to her anymore. It's, no, but the, the fact of the matter is, like, one, it's getting airtime, which is just annoying. Mm. But the problem is, the goody good is going, oh, yeah, that sounds like a good idea. Let's let her do it. And that's, well, that's the annoying part, is people actually think that these are good ideas. And yeah. because people think this is a good idea, the whole mindset is, oh, well, you know, they know what they're doing. Let's allow them to do it. Mm. <laughs> yeah, it's you know, crazy. People don't question. Yeah. People uh, don't question, and that's the problem. Now, I don't know. Um, I actually should. I'll bring this up at the start of the show next week. But I don't know if you guys have actually noticed whatever that there's a new part of the web page. It's called Tidbits, and um, it's for people who want to just write an article about something. We got this guy from got Brian. He's been writing a few articles. He's now. You probably think, oh, geez, that's just. Um, all he does is talk about Dell. Well, he does. He actually works for him, so that's probably why. But yeah, he, he's there. He writes a couple. <laughs> he writes a couple of articles in. He probably I don't know. He's been doing about one a month. So go to the webpage, have a look at those. So there you go. They're interesting. This this month he's talking about what tech gadget to buy your loved one on uh, Valentine's Day, which is fast approaching, about another month away. So you've got to start thinking about these things if you want it to come from Honkers. Bloody supermarkets already. Yeah, it's crazy, isn't it? Getting earlier every year. <laughs> but anyway. They were there. On Boxing Day, I walked into the supermarket and there was hot cross buns sitting there. Yeah, it's rubbish, isn't it? Um, anything else, Will? Uh, yeah, one more quick story. Um, they're finally, Australia are finally allowing 18, R18 plus video games to be sold in this country. Um, and the race is on to be the first approved R18 game in Australia. Uh, and... Basically, after all these different people went through, there was, you know, everything from Ninja, Gaiden 3, Razor's Edge, and all these sort of games. Uh, the first game, as far as I've been able to find out anyway, that got approval for the R18 was Mortal Kombat. Oh, yeah? That's been approved? From, what, 1994? Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it was the first game tell to be approved with the R18 license. Yeah, okay. Um, now, I think I, I don't have a problem with the R18. I think it's about time they brought it in, um, allowing people to pick and choose their own games. It's like going to the movies. If you're not going to go and let your, your kid might be able to sneak into a 15 plus and then make 15, but they're not going to get into to an 18. Mm. And it's going to be the same thing with games. I think you know it's a good idea. It means that games that were not allowed, that it had to go back and get rewritten. Like, I don't know if you remember back in the day, uh, Duke Nukem 3D, oh, which, okay. by the way, is available on uh, GOG.com, which is good old games. Uh, it's available for free at the moment as a free download because the new Nukem has been 15 years or whatever it has been. Uh, but it, when it was first released, when the, beat, the trial was released, um, the shareware version, that's it, it's been a while since I've had to use that term, when the shareware oh, version was released, yeah, it had, um, you know, pole dancing girls and it had, like, exact lava, alien-looking, you know, people and things like that. And once it was released, that was all taken out to hit the Australian market. Everywhere else in the world had them uh, except us. And, yeah, obviously there was hacks and patches and, and whatever you could apply to bring it. But, you know... The thing is, the game wasn't the same. If you play it, I, I still play it. I love it. I play it probably two or three times a week still. Yeah, right. It's just fun. Yeah, okay. That and do you know, go and play, you know. But the thing is, if you play the Australian version, it actually takes part of the gameplay out because there's actually things that you have to do in yeah. some levels. Yeah. Require those particular rights to be there. So, you know, 
Yeah, yeah, that's pretty bad. I, I don't think I mean, if it's going to destroy the game, well, they either just shouldn't release it anyway, or uh, yeah, whatever. But um, but yeah. And the cool part about the new 3D Atomic Edition is it comes with Mame already installed, so not Mame, um, DOSBox already oh. installed. So it works straight up once you install it. it works oh, look, you need, you need me able to download this on your phone, Will. It's only 35 meg. Yeah, Nothing. it's not Java though. Um, you can what you do is you download the Java game and then you download this and you take the level folders out of this and you put into your, onto your phone. Same with Doom, and you can play them on your phone. And believe it or not, on a phone my size, I know, like with a five-inch screen and with a tablet, it's actually very playable. It's not a bad game at all, actually. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, so yes, but go to, go to GAG, check it out. Um, there's some stuff on there you go, oh, wow, I completely forgot about that, like Heretic and uh, and um, Hexen and Blood and Rise of the Triad and Wacky Races. Yeah, okay. So G- um, GOG.com is the place to go. Good. Yeah. And a lot of them are free and one of them, like Leisure Suit Larry, is I think <laughs> one of them is free and one of them is like a dollar. Oh, do they have yeah, so. do they have Sammy Lightfoot? Yeah, uh, <laughs> yes, they've got Sam and Max in the road. They've got Full Throttle. They've got uh, Zork. Um, and I'm sorry, but nothing beats Zork. <laughs> it's still the best text. Well, it's a sex based game, but uh, it's still one of the best games ever. Oh no, Sammy um, Lightfoot. Wolfenstein. Oh, Wolfenstein. They... Yeah, Wolfenstein. Um, yeah, cool, like George and the Dog Jungle and the original Jadis Jack Rabbit. And yeah, okay. So yeah, S-T-E-R. Sam and Max hit the road. I don't know what that is. So, <laughs> oh, yeah. Sam and Max is pretty cool. Um, let's play so many of those games. Scary. Well, it's a bit slow oh, on the old search. <laughs> but anyway, Probably because you've got no band. That's the gog. Um, That's gog anyway. Go and, go and do yourself a favour, check it out. All right. No more, Will? Um, nothing major, no. There's, there's a few things going on, but, uh, you know, I'm sure we'll, uh, we'll cover them next time. So don't forget, to ch- I'm, uh, there's probably some more in the show notes we've forgotten. There usually is. So there's usually a couple we miss. Yeah. Um, oh, one thing I would like to say to the uh, Jelly Bean updates for the... Uh, Galaxy S3s that aren't network locked, so all the unbranded, all the grain ports um, has been released, so you can finally put Jelly Bean, the latest 4.1.2, on your handset uh, via keys. So that's pretty neat. Uh, it'll just fix a couple of little issues there's been. Uh, so if you bought it from Dick Smith or somewhere like that, or it's a grain port, that you know something that's not network locked, because the networks are going to bring their own version out, it's going to take forever to do it. So. So yeah, so go and download that. That'll that'll help make a difference. Mm-hmm. And oh, I've got to say, I bought the domain. Don't don't think I was had ah, that last week. The little no. the little seven inch uh, Android tablet from Domain, ninety eight dollars. And uh, the little little girl, she's playing it and she loves it. And uh, she, I set her up with a like a you know just a. a sort of a Gmail account uh, with no credit card and she gets into the app store and goes hell for leather. <laughs> she loves it. <laughs> Downloading everything she That's can. Why, for free. <laughs> that's right. No credit card for her. No way. No way. All right. Well, I think that's just about done us, Will. Um, so, uh, yeah, we, we've scratched through with Will's uh, scratchy audio. So apologies for the ins and outs and all the little... Like that one there, <laughs> all the little scratches that, um, yeah, that come through. But Will was on his phone tonight. He's, he's repairing and upgrading his computer to Windows 8, hopefully, hopefully. So um, geez, I, hope, I hope his phone bandwidth holds out. He's gonna, oh, there it is. Hang on, let, let's have a look. Let's have a look at Will's desk. Well, that has, at, at, at the moment, it's, um, it's kind of, well, in pieces, as you can see. Um, I'm just, I thought, well, it's just not operational. Oh, this is the, uh, I should show you these, actually. I talked at the start of the show about how they gave me the wrong memory. I'll just quickly show you. This is the uh, Vengeance, the Corsair Vengeance 2x8 uh, gig sticks they gave me to replace. And just so you get an idea, um, that 
is the standard RAM stick that was in it prior to the upgrade. So, uh, yeah, so there's <laughs> what's the problem? There's an awful lot of heat sink on those things. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, so they saying that it runs hot or something? <clears throat> uh, I, well, not with those, it won't. That's for sure. But yeah, I was. Um, that's what I was saying. I, I walked into Game Dude, said, "Hey, this memory is faulty. It's you know replaced it under warranty. Some little new kid has just started." Uh, walked out the back and goes, "Oh, this is all I can find. Will this do?" <laughs> okay, nice. Yeah, that'll do. Good stuff. Uh, yeah, that's fine. I'm not going to go, uh, but I'll take that. I'm not very happy about it, but thank you anyway. I'll see you later. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, that's what you do. You got to get out of there when you get something. Oh, like that big, big mother with RAM and fans and things and prongs sticking all out of it that look good looks good good old ram eh good old game dude <laughs> all right all right then uh ladies and gentlemen that brings us to the end of tonight's show so want to thank you all for joining us and uh once again um yeah hopefully you, you it was will's uh will's voice was okay tonight so apologies for that and hopefully we should have a full compliment next week next week with um uh, as, as far as i know i think the whole team will be back so can't wait for that all right, and we'll we'll see you next week. Thanks for popping in. And Hopefully, I'll be here. <laughs> fix that computer. Re-upload the eight. I'm going to do my eight tomorrow for sure. I just didn't want to do it uh, before the show <laughs> for obvious reasons. So, uh, wait, 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 what could go wrong? What could go wrong? <laughs> that's right, exactly. So, all right. So, uh, that's about it. I've given you the emails through the show. Glenn, Will, Eric at AussieTechS.com.au. We've got, um, you know, we've got everything going on. Just go to the web page. There's heaps, heaps of there. Show notes, the tidbits, um, back, back videos of Garth's reviews, whatever you want, whatever you want, whatever, whatever's there. Go and get them. Uh, so that's about it. Yes, that's it. What was that? Go to our YouTube channel and check out our the YouTube videos on YouTube there. Yeah, if you want to get the past the past catalogue of the show, you can go there. Or there's also, oh, I don't know, I think I did an iPhone unboxing. I did the Apple TV unboxing and a computer put-together show. How to build a computer. How to build a computer, to build a computer while wearing thongs. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> that's right. It was a hot day. <laughs> God, give me a break. <laughs> We're not supposed to see that far down, but uh, yeah, look, that, that that that's not a bad one. How to build a PC from start to start to power up, from parts to power up, I think it was called or something like that. And it was in real time, so I didn't actually mean it to be a to be a, a fully fledged video, but I was going to just take segments out of it, you know, and 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 parcel them up as individual how tos, you know, like put the RAM in and all that stuff. But I thought, oh, I don't care, you know, people who are trying to build their machine. You know, sometimes you do want a little real time video so you can just work alongside. You know, you don't want nothing. You don't want to have to be pausing and stopping all the time. Just real time. Enjoy the banner. Enjoy the thongs. And uh, yeah, <laughs> get, get going. <laughs> all right. So that's it. So until next week, it's another Aussie Tech Heads in the can, as they say. So until then, till we meet again, it's bye bye from me, and I'm sure it's goodbye from Will. <laughs> Good night, Will. Good night, everyone. Bye bye, Lounge. Thank <laughs> you.